Halloween's coming up soon, the spookiest, scariest time of the year, so what better time to make a horror game? And I thought, being the esteemed, amazing developer that I am, that I would teach all you dummies out there how to make the perfect horror game. And we're going to be doing that by looking at some case studies of the most successful horror games of recent years. Those games being Five Nights at Freddy's, Security Breach, Poppy's Playtime, and Garden of Ban Ban. We'll study them all extensively and then take everything we've learned and combine it to create the ultimate horror experience. So let's get started. The first and most important thing we need to do for a horror game is we need to figure out how we're going to scare all the little kids playing our game. Because yes, that is the first thing you need to know. The target audience is children. What, what you don't believe me? Just look at our case studies. Poppy's Playtime has a kids YouTube channel attached to it. FNAF Security Breach says family friendly in the game's description. And Garten of Ban Ban literally has kindergarten in the name. Alright, they knew exactly who their target audience was. So obviously, we're going to do the same thing. And the answer to how we're going to scare them is, uh, we're not. Not at all. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the first rule of making the perfect horror game. The game cannot be scary. Instead of dark and disturbing, it should be bright and colourful. You know, like our case studies. Now, I know you may be a little bit confused by that. Alex, if it's not scary, then, then how is it a horror game? Well, listen, alright. As long as it has a jump scare, that's sort of all you need. Anything with a jump scare is considered a horror game these days. And honestly, it doesn't even really need to be a jump scare. In all of these games, you know exactly when the monster is going to jump scare you. you. You know, it's when the monster touches you. And since you know exactly when it's going to happen, it doesn't really make you jump. And then, by extension, you're not really scared either. But I guess as long as the monster screams in your face, it counts. And therefore, it's a horror game. Anyway, now that we understand that, we're on to our next rule. We need a recognisable mascot monster for our game. And this is so important that the entire genre is named after it, alright? So since it's so important... We're going to have to put a lot of effort into this monster design. Nah, I'm just kidding. You don't have to put in any effort whatsoever. So let's get going, shall we? Let's start designing one. And we'll do it based off of our case studies. Y you know, of course. So take a look at these three <clears throat> monsters and tell me, what do they all have in common? Right, they're not scary. N not in the slightest. They are obnoxiously colourful, friendly looking, and they're also something designed for children, like in-universe, you know, like an animatronic or a children's toy. So they're things for children in the context of the game and in real life. So obviously, we're going to go down a similar route. And I decided that since this is going to be a mascot horror game, we'll make the mascot literally a mascot, like, like a school mascot, one of these guys. I know, I know, not creative at all, but as I said before, it really doesn't need to be. Anyway, mascots are typically based on animals, which is great for us because kids love animals. But we can't have something like a, a bear or a tiger, no, 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 no. Much too scary and dangerous. So instead, I googled the most harmless animals, and number one was a sheep. So, uh, sheep it is, I guess. And now, bearing in mind everything we've just learned, this is the design I came up with. Drum roll, please. He looks like a fucking Care Bear. And that's perfect, perfect. Because as I said before, he needs to be colourful and not scary. So, you know, the Care Bear look, that's exactly what we want. But now we've got to come up with a name for him. And I suppose we should follow our case studies and name him something fucking stupid like Huggy Wuggy or... Captain Fiddles, you know, some dumb shit like that. So let's name him, uh, Wooly Willy. No, no, that's awful, that's awful. Uh, Scary Sammy, ah, oh, no, that sucks. Um, Sonny Smiley, uh, you know what, fuck it, that's good enough. On to the next part, the game setting. And that brings us to our next rule. When it comes to the environment, 
It needs to be somewhere that's, you know, like a place for kids. You know, like a Freddy's family restaurant, a kid's toy factory, or a kindergarten. Why, you ask? Well, you know, it's more familiar and relatable to our target audience. So a school, perfect for that. You know, it's a place for kids, and our monster is, is like a school mascot. You know, that, that's perfect. And now we've got to add some gameplay. But, luckily for us, it like... It doesn't matter at all, you know, just add some lame puzzle or like a fetch quest or something. Oh, actually, actually, looking at my uh, my notes here, I've got a good example for this section, and it comes from Poppy's Playtime Chapter 1, in this, uh, this battery room here. Basically, what you've got to do is you've got to pick up these batteries and put one in each spot on this console. And every battery is in this same room right in front of you, you literally just walk over, pick them up, and put them down, just like that. So, is this a puzzle? Uh, well, you just sort of pick them up and put them here. So, I guess it's not really a puzzle, is it? So, what is it? Well, I don't know, to be honest. It just sort of takes up time for no reason. I don't really know what to call it. But I do know that this is exactly what you want for this type of game. So, in my game, you just go around and collect these items while the monster's chasing you. Nice and simple, menial task, very simple for children to understand. It's perfect. And you may be asking, But, but why, why do we have to pick all this stuff up? What, what, what's the point? But, don't worry. I'll explain that all in the next part. The law. Now, the law must be about dead people possessing, you know, whatever the monster is. Animatronics, toys, whatever. And that is our next rule. And this is an absolute must, okay? Every horror game has this. FNAF has dead kids possessing animatronics. Poppy's Playhouse has dead employees possessing giant toys. Bendy has employees possessing ink creatures. And I don't know the lore of Gardener Banban, because uh, I got better things to do. But I am willing to bet that that's what the story is about. And we have to make sure that the law is as cryptic and disjointed and hard to understand as possible. And that is our final rule to making the perfect horror game. You know, we can't use normal methods to tell the story, like a cutscene or gameplay or something. No, 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 definitely not. Make sure you only tell your story via audio tapes, written notes, or like maybe videotapes. And without reading these notes, the game will make literally no sense. B but that's, that's fine, alright? Don't worry if it doesn't make sense, that's completely fine, completely normal. Uh, you'll probably change the whole story in the sequel anyway. I mean, all that stuff that was once, you know, really important, it'll just be forgotten about in like, two games. So don't sweat it, alright? The story making sense, that should be your last priority. Actually, you know what? I've just come up with a better idea. Scrap everything I just said about the law. Don't even bother making a story at all, alright? Listen to this. All you gotta do is make a bunch of random clues, like notes and whatever, and then MatPat will make a video on your game. He'll put it all together and make up the story for you. And then you can just say that you got it right. There we go. That's much easier. That's a way better plan. Now the game is almost completely done, but we need to add one final touch. You gotta make sure you go hard on the monetization. Specifically, merch. Even if just chapter one is out with like 10 minutes of gameplay, get that merch in there. All right, t-shirts, hats, teddies, NFTs, the whole lot, all right? And that, my friends, is the final rule. And that is how you make the perfect horror game. So if you wanna make your own, just follow these rules and you're good to go. As for this game, I got a feeling this will be the next big hit on YouTube Kids.